For those of you who do not know me, uh, my name is Tamitha Mulligan Scove, and I am a PhD in space weather physics. Uh, that basically means that I know a lot about what the sun does and what it spits off and what it shoots at Earth. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing. I see a lot of people logging on. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that. What we're in right now, we've just hit a solar storm. It's actually beginning to hit Earth now. It's not very strong as of yet, and it may not get that way because it's a mini storm. But uh, we will start seeing some degradation on the ham bands. We are having uh, issues right now that are building, and uh, they look like they're going to continue probably for the next few hours at least. So I thought that I'd start. Hi from Des Moines. Good to see you. Will ATC frequencies be impacted? A little bit, uh, not too much. We don't seem to have a solar radiation storm, and the solar radiation storms are the ones that impact the uh, air traffic control frequencies the most. Uh, the, those, those, thank goodness, don't happen very often, but when they do, they can have very uh, severe consequences. And matter of fact, the FAA has to reroute their flights away from the polar regions. So when those happen, I will do definitely be on scope and let people know, especially if they have uh, an, like an a in continental, intercontinental flight or over the uh, oceans or anything like that, I will let you uh, know that those radiation storms are ongoing so that you just can be aware or that you can decide if you happen to be a high-risk passenger whether you even want to get on a plane uh, because you will get a higher dose of radiation during those storms. So anyway, thank you again for the hearts and thank you for inviting followers. I think, uh, yeah, Kogan, it's, it, the HF radio will is getting a little bit of something right now and I'll get into that here in just a second. Hello from Germany, good to see you. Uh, we, we, uh, we are getting a solar storm right now. At the moment, it's not too intense. But it is, it is hitting us, and uh, it probably will be impacting the ham bands here for easily the next day or so. So anyway, let me get to it, since we seem to have a, a decent number of people on, on board. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, so what I will do, here's obviously a picture of the sun. Hopefully everybody recognizes that by now. And as soon as it, well, I have it on a, a loop, and as soon as it begins again, I will, uh, which will be just a second, here we go. This is a filament right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, hopefully you can. It begins to let off and then we go black for a second. This is the reason why NOAA has not predicted this solar storm, why we haven't seen any, uh, any modeling of this storm. We have, because we had a little bit of a blackout on uh, the SDO, that's this instrument, the AIA instrument on SDO. But it looked like the filament was lifting off. It most likely did because it was, as soon as we got the images back, uh, the filament looked like it was gone, but then we couldn't see it in coronagraphs either. We also had a data outage in coronagraphs. Here's the filament again. It begins to lift off and it then disappears. So that is an issue. We also had another filament lift off right here. I don't know if you can see it. Bam, right there it lifts off. Those are the two partially Earth-directed solar storms. They're mini storms. These aren't the big ones, but they are beginning to, we are beginning to see in the solar wind that they are hitting. These happened on the 10th and the 11th, and it takes about four days for these small and slow storms to hit us. So that's what we're dealing with right now. It could give us issues here over the next day or so. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, and yes, I appreciate the hearts. That's, that's very, I'm very grateful for those. Uh, so th that will probably give us issues over the next few day or so, maybe even the next couple days, and I'll keep you guys posted. I do owe you a bigger, uh, more com comprehensive video here, which will be coming out in the next, probably tomorrow or the next day. Uh, I especially have to get it online for Ham Nation, so I should have it done by then. And then I have to talk about the new region that's rotating into view. That Oh, as a matter of fact, before I do that, let me move over to this tab here. Uh, right here. Now this tab, this, this image, hopefully you can see this pretty well, this is the predicted KP index. The KP index is an index that, get, ooh, I look really blown out, don't I? Sorry about that. The exposure went correct, kind of wonky. Um, the KP index is an index that shows how disturbed the Earth's magnetic field is. And usually in quiet times it's down here at 1 and 2. Disturbed times it gets 3 to 4. 5 is storming. Uh, so you can see this is a predicted index, and it's showing that we are getting higher and higher, uh, getting ready for basically an unsettled condition. So we don't have storming yet, but we're beginning to get there. So that, uh, then that could increase over the next day or so. So that's that. That's due to that solar storm. So just in case you wanted to know, and what that also means is that we will have, 
uh, any, anybody who is at high latitudes, if you have a UAV or if you deal with GPS, if you happen to be a taxi driver, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it. Uh, if you happen to be a taxi driver or anything like that, you could conceivably have issues with your GPS. Okay? So that will be over the next 24 hours or so, maybe a little bit more. Now, for the second part of this, I'm moving on to the new region, which used to be called 2403. Do you see this huge highlighted region over here? Yeah, that's the big bad boy. This was the big M flare player last month. It took, takes about 27 days for one of these regions to rotate behind this, or from the Earth view, rotate around the sun and come back. So we saw him about a month ago, and he's, he's turning, coming back. Luckily, it doesn't look like this region, which has been renumbered uh, 2418, it doesn't look like this region is going to be nearly the M flare player it was last time. So you amateur radio operators and, and people flying on airplanes and all of that stuff, where can I watch the on my phone live? Where can state that again, Clay? I, I didn't. I don't quite understand that. Where can you watch what the you're asking about the sun? Where you can watch it live? This is an S. If if so, this is an SDO uh, website. So if you go to sdo.gsfc.nasa.gov, you will see it's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Again, that website is sdo.gsfc.nasa. Gov. Okay, yes, where can I get a live view of the sun on my phone? Uh, you can also download, there are several apps. Um, there are quite a few apps, actually. Effects is a good one. There's also, um, I think it's, what is it? I don't know if there's a Helio Viewer app on the phone. Other people might, yes, thank you for putting that in the, in the chat. I appreciate it. Also, other people who, who have your favorite uh, app for, for solar observations, could you go ahead and put that in the chat as well? so that we can share kind of what, uh, what everybody's favorite app is and who thinks uh, it works the best because obviously iOS devices compared to Android, some things get stuck, some things work better. So if you have a favorite um, uh, app for your phone for looking at solar observations, please go ahead and add that to the chat now if you don't mind. But Effects is one of, one of the ones I use. I, I don't use too much on my phone. I usually go straight to the websites uh, and, and look at SDO and look at these raw images. So, all right, so anyway, so back to region 2418, that, that is the region that you see popping around here. Believe it or not, it is not the biggest player that I think we're going to have on the sun this week. This week it's going to be region, I think this is region 2415. It's this guy right here. This guy was not even in existence about four days ago. So it has kind of grown and exploded over the backside of the sun and it is continuing to grow. So this actually may be the biggest player that we have if we get any M flare. Uh, M-class M flares this week. Uh, but it is in close proximity to that big re region, uh, 2418. So there's still some synergy there. I do think that we will, thank you again for the hearts, I do think we will get um, some increased activity this week because as we'll see, and especially when I do my bigger, what causes these flares, uh, all of this, okay, I'll show you. This is actually a really good picture to show. This is what we call 171 angstroms. It's the yellow or the golden rod color uh, when you see the sun. The reason why we have this particular color is it shows a particular uh, temperature, which also corresponds to a different layer on the sun. It's like, kind of like a depth in the atmosphere. And you can actually see magnetic field lines really, really well. And that is what causes flares. When you have magnetic field, that is, is just like when you have fridge magnets. If you flip magnets back and forth, you can feel the forces on them, right? They go back and forth. They get, sometimes they repel, sometimes they attract, stuff like that. Those forces are exactly what's going on with each one of these little uh, loops. And as these loops kind of interact with one another, sometimes they click together, sometimes they push each other apart, that type of thing. Those forces, when they click together, everything gets reorganized. And when everything gets reorganized, a lot of energy is let out. And sometimes that energy is so dramatic that it creates a huge flare. So that's, what, that's where flares come from. And unfortunately, we don't understand the sun's magnetic fields well enough to be able to predict them. Maybe we can let you tell us what you're wanting to get out, then take questions. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I try to be interactive, though. I want to make sure everybody is able to, uh, to get, you know, to, to know that I'm listening and I'm paying attention to them. But yes, uh, let me finish. So, um, so at any rate... 
you can see this region, this old big region, it is still very large, and we will still see some synergy here. On top of that, there are, are several coronal holes. You can't see it in this image, but there's a coronal hole, and then when, when this rotates into view, there is another coronal hole that's right behind it. And that has a tendency to make things really unsettled and unstable. So we might see some solar storms being launched from this region. We'll have to wait till it rotates almost into center view before we end up having um, Fire crush. <laughs> oh, geez, thanks. Uh, we we have to have we have to wait till it rotates nearly center sun before we have these things uh, rotate or actually um, launching solar storms that are earthward directed. But we will be seeing uh, we'll be keeping our eye on region twenty four eighteen. So um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to be able to tell you. And feel free uh, to tweet me questions, and I will end up having a Q and A session probably a scope that I'll do a Q&A session because I'm behind answering tweets from the last storm. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.